It's Monday, October 27th, 2025, and we are watching Monster Hurricane Melissa out here just south of Jamaica. It's officially a Category 5, okay? The latest reading is uh, 912 millibars at the center. That's a very, very low pressure center uh, with winds around 161 miles per hour, and it is still strengthening. The uh, pressure is getting lower every time the Hurricane Hunters go through that center. They're coming back with a 5 to 10 millibar lower reading. Uh, I don't know when that's going to stop, but you can see right now that the latest uh, satellite imagery shows this thing actually wobbling west. It's already supposed to have started on that northerly turn. Whenever that happens, it's going to start moving pretty quick, but right now it's literally moving at like one to two miles per hour and it's going west. And the farther west it goes, the more time it's going to have over water and the more likely it is that it's just going to keep getting stronger. I wouldn't be surprised if we had 170 mile per hour winds with this thing as it got closer to Jamaica with 200 mile per hour wind gusts around the eye wall. This is one of the most intense storms we've had in the Caribbean for uh, a, a long time. And we've really never seen anything like this in, in recent times in Jamaica. Okay. So it, this does look like it's going to be a very devastating storm for our friends in Jamaica as it goes up towards the island. We do expect that the storm is going to continue to be a category five storm on October 28th at 2 a.m. Okay. So tonight uh, around midnight, a little bit after that, it's going to be getting closer to to the island and then it'll probably be early in the morning uh, when it actually makes landfall somewhere between alligator uh, pond and up there towards savannah lamar okay the kingston side of the island looks to fare a little bit better as far as the winds go but the problem here is that kingston and really the whole island um, is going to have a big problem with rainfall up to 40 inches of rain could fall as a result of this system which will lead to catastrophic flooding and that's besides the 10 to 13 foot storm surge that's going to come along with this uh, it is going to be an absolute nightmare of a situation in jamaica over the next 48 hours or so this is the third category five storm of 2025 and in 2005 which is a year we all remember as being like the hurricane year there were four all right so we're right up there with 2005 and it may not feel like that because we've went all year without really having to worry about these monster storms making an impact with land but of course unfortunately we're not going to get out of 2025 without a devastating, life-altering uh, storm making impact with land. It's going to hit Jamaica head on over here, and there will be impacts that will be felt for a very long time in the future. We're talking about utility outages for who knows how long. We're talking about a reshaping of the geography of the island down here to an extent. So it's going to be a really bad storm. And once again, I'm expecting that landfall to be sometime early tomorrow morning in Jamaica, and then it'll be on the other side of Jamaica by 2 p.m. Okay, so once this thing starts at turn, it's going to start moving faster. So we're all just kind of waiting for that turn to happen. Right now, it's still moving almost directly west. It's just floating around out there, barely moving. But once it gets past Jamaica, it's going to start rocketing. It'll be a Category 3 major hurricane making landfall near Guantanamo in eastern Cuba by October 29th at 2 a.m. And then we've got to be concerned about the Bahamas up here by 2 p.m. on the 29th. Okay, so you can see how it's moving a lot quicker the farther north it goes. It's even going to continue to be a hurricane, potentially a Category 1 hurricane, all the way up here by Bermuda. So here's another look at the path without the satellite. Still Category 5 by 2 a.m. tonight. It'll be a Category 4 on the other side of Jamaica, Category 3 in Cuba, Category 2 as it gets close to Crooked Island over here in the Bahamas, and then Category 1 up here in Bermuda. Once again, I don't think that anybody in the United States has a lot to worry about with this, uh, except for maybe in southeastern Florida and in the Outer Banks of the Carolinas, places like that. We're probably going to have another problem with some coastal flooding and some rip current and stuff because this is going to be a powerful storm sending major swells hundreds of miles to the west. And once again, in Jamaica, a storm surge of 9 to 13 feet above normal tide levels is going to cause major problems on the southern side of the island. Uh, we've got uh, 20 to 40 inches of rain that's going to be falling and then right at landfall, winds of 140, 150, 160 miles per hour are going to be possible with gusts closer to 200. There's not a lot else that I can add to that, okay? This is going to be uh, the worst storm that we've seen down there in our lifetimes more than likely and hopefully people are already as safe as they can be but if people haven't gotten the message yet this is going to be a storm that you can't ride out along the coast and you've got to get to higher ground and you've got to figure out a way to get to a safe spot one of the unique things about Jamaica here is there's some pretty high terrain the winds 
in the high terrains might actually be stronger than uh, along the coast at landfall. Okay, so that's going to lead to big problems up there in some of the uh, higher elevation areas. And then if you're in the valleys, if you're trying to protect yourself in the valleys on this island, that's where we're going to see some of the most catastrophic flooding. We've seen what can happen when you dump 20 to 30 inches of rain in a valley in North Carolina. Similar stuff is going to happen in Jamaica with this amount of rainfall. And we're about to dive so much deeper into that. But first, let's shout out today's awesome sponsor. ZipRecruiter, rated number one job site in the US. Y'all know that this channel right here has grown like a weed over the past uh, couple of years. And as that growth has flourished, it's been great. It's been wonderful, right? But we need some help. We're doing 12 hour long live streams. We're trying to make a million TikToks and YouTube videos a day. And it's hard to uh, find the time to hire in the traditional sense. There's probably a lot of other entrepreneurs and uh, businesses out there that probably feel that same problem. We don't have time to sort through resumes. Why not automate the process of finding real quality candidates? That's what ZipRecruiter does. ZipRecruiter finds amazing candidates for you and they do it fast. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ryan Hall. Here's what makes it work. As soon as you post your job, their algorithm is going to kick in and it's going to start showing you qualified people for it. Actually, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. And let's say that you see somebody out in the wild that you like and you think that they would be a good fit. You can use ZipRecruiter's pre-written invite to apply message to personally reach out to your favorite candidates and encourage them to apply sooner. It's that simple. So ditch the other hiring sites. This one's the best for real. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ryan Hall. You can get started today for free. There's a link at the top of the description. I really do think that this is the smartest way to hire. So click that link and let's get back into the forecast. Now let's take a look at our aware model. Uh, obviously, we're in action phase in Jamaica. Everybody there needs to be taking action to protect their life and property now. Same thing in eastern Cuba. Uh, but uh, I really hope that everybody in the Bahamas is also starting to take action. In Mayaguana, Crooked Island especially, and then Long Island, all three of these islands are going to take some sort of significant impact from the storm in the form of storm surge, heavy rainfall, and strong winds. Even all the way back here towards Eleuthera, we need to be preparing for some tropical storm impacts all the way back there. And in southern Florida, once again, we've got to be watching out for some rip currents, some high tides, some coastal flooding and stuff like that. And even though we're pretty far away over here in Bermuda, it is action time in Bermuda. Within four days, we're going to have a uh, very strong storm coming by Bermuda, potentially Category 1, Category 2 hurricane making direct contact with the island. Now, let's briefly talk about the weather across the rest of the United States. Nothing as interesting is happening out here in the lower 48. We do have a storm system uh, exiting off the coast that will bring some heavy rain into the Appalachians and over into the Piedmont area of the Carolinas over the, the next couple of days. This will lead to some isolated flooding problems. We've also got another system that's uh, diving into the Rockies and the Plains uh, tonight into tomorrow that'll bring some much colder weather into the Great Plains and eventually the Midwest and even the Southeast. This is that storm system that's going to be with us around Halloween. It is going to bring some storms and some rain and some, just some dreary conditions into the eastern United States as we go into the 29th and 30th, but there's going to be a pretty substantial pocket of cool air behind it that is going to make Halloween and uh, the day before Halloween pretty cold across a lot of the eastern United States. But regardless of how you feel about the cold and the gusty winds and the rain that'll come along with this, we've got to be very thankful for this system because it is this that is swatting Melissa away from the United States. If it wasn't for this system, it's very likely that Florida, maybe the Carolinas, or maybe even uh, the Gulf Coast would have to worry about Melissa, but we don't have to worry about it at all right now thanks to this baseball bat of a system that's going to swat Melissa out of the way. After that goes through, we are going to have some uh, period of time where things are quiet again across the U.S. Things are going to be colder in the east, warmer in the west. We're going to have lots of warm air advection actually in the southwest as uh, we continue to see a ridge build up over there. And uh, yeah, there's nothing substantial that pops out to me until we get way back into La La Land on the GFS. And uh, at that point, it's, it's kind of pointless to talk about because it will change. So we continue to stay locked in on Hurricane Melissa here at the Weather House. I really recommend you guys tuning into Yallbot, the 24-7 channel. Search up Yallbot on YouTube here. There's a link in the description. You can go to my channel. You can find a link uh, to Yallbot on there. And the cool thing about Yallbot is as these hurricane hunters are going into the storm, Yallbot is like narrating that in real time and, and telling you how strong the storm's gotten, how deep the pressure's gotten, and all that stuff. And anytime there's any updates, it'll go to that. I'm 
trying to figure out what it looks like if I go live for something like this. We've never covered anything outside of the US. We've never covered a situation like this. So we're thinking about it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. We might go live just for some reconnaissance stuff and you know, just to try to get the word out about what's going on. Yeah, we're, we're thinking about it. I'm on standby mode. I'm at the weather house. I'm, my attention is completely on Hurricane Melissa, but I don't know if going live is the best thing. So we're, we're trying to figure that out. Subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on just in case. And uh, yeah, we'll have another video tomorrow, potentially even tonight if we don't go live. So turn notifications on and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.